Okay, so we are on to chapter nine, which is trigonometric ratios. And a lot of this is from GCSE. And a lot of it's really just kind of remembering some of these kind of key facts that we've got here and here. And then I will be doing a mixed problem on the next slide that we have. So we're going to dive in straight away with all of these different definitions on the left hand side. So to begin with, when we have a right angled triangle, I want to know the definitions of sine theta, cos theta and tan theta. So we remember from GCSE that sine theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cos theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse and tan theta is the opposite over the adjacent. So we have our Sokatoa. That's probably the way that most people remember this that we have. Okay, now for the cosine rule, we're going to go with, it kind of looks like um, Pythagoras when you started off. So we have a squared equals b squared plus c squared. And we've got this extra bit that, adju that adjusts it, which is our minus 2bc cos a like this. Now, some people know the other version of this where it's rearranged to have cos a as the subject. If we do have that, it is that cos a is equal to B, B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. But I'm going to put brackets around this because I personally don't know this one off by heart. Um, I, I would have to rearrange this one. So I might be doing that later on in this video as well. Now, the sine rule that we have, oh, I suppose I should actually have pointed out about the cosine rule that the key thing with this is that the lowercase a and the lowercase b and lowercase c, those are all uh, measurements of the sides and capital A is opposite the lowercase a and that refers to an angle. So just the key thing is that if you have this a here and this angle, this side needs to be opposite this angle in the triangle. And it's the same in the sine rule that the sides are opposite the angles with the same letter that is in its capital form. So for the sine rule, we just have sine A over A. We have sine B over B. You actually you only need two of these, but it's true for all three of the angles and their opposite sides. And with the sine rule, we know that we can have the rule sort of flipped over. We can take the reciprocal. So we'd have A over sine A, B over sine B, and C over sine C. All of that's GCSE so far, but there is now the ambiguous case with the sine rule. This is where we could say that sine theta is the same as sine of 180 minus theta. So I don't know, let's say you calculated an angle and you got that it was 30 degrees. Well, actually, it could also be 180 minus 30 degrees. It could be 150 degrees and it would still be a possible triangle. So we don't know which of those two it would be. We'd look at the context of the question to decide whether it would be an acute or an obtuse angle. And then we finish with the area of a triangle. Everybody knows this one, a half AB sine C. It's a capital C because it's the angle which is in between the two sides that we've got there. And of course, don't forget for area of a triangle, if you can do base times height divided by two, obviously do do that because that is uh, more, more straightforward. Okay, we do need to know about the graphs and some exact values. And I'm gonna talk a bit more about exact values in a minute because people are always like, do I really need to know that? So for the graphs that we've got here, I'm going to start off by talking about the green one. Obviously the green one that we have is y equals tan x. And there's a key feature of there being an asymptote at 90, meaning it approaches that line, but never crosses it. And also at 270. And of course it starts off at zero and it kind of shoots up and it goes down to negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity as you get closer to 270. Now our next graph that we've got, which is the red one, that is going to be y equals sine x. Sine x always starts from the origin and has that kind of wave motion. And then our third one, of course, the blue one, is y equals cos x. And I remember that cos x starts from one and then goes down and up again. It's like the sine graph, but just slightly shifted that we've got there. A couple of important properties are that the sine and cos graph vary between one and minus one, whereas the tan graph goes from everywhere, has any kind of value. Although I've only got it going up to like two and a bit, this line would kind of shoot up and up and up and up to very, very high values the closer that you get to 90. Now, I know people are going to be like, I don't need exact values because I have a calculator in my maths exam. Now, you might not believe me, but the students who are able to recall the exact values without having to do much thinking, they are able to solve problems much more effectively and they are able to spot patterns more quickly. So I would really recommend you learning these because they're often the difference between like an A and an A star student, in my opinion. So I'm going to begin by just using the graph to rem remind ourselves of these ones. So we can see that sine theta starts at the origin, so it's zero. Cos theta starts at one and tan theta starts at the origin as well. And then for 90 degrees, you can see that we have just sine is the only one that is got up at, up at the top. So that's a one. 
cos is now at zero and tan at this particular point, tan of 90 that we have is undefined. And I'm just going to say, I won't say it's equal to undefined, I should just say it is undefined at that point, meaning it doesn't have a value, we can't evaluate it. And then for 45 degrees is where we use this triangle that we've got here. Now, I shouldn't really have had the root two, I'm going to change this on the PDF, there should just be the one and the one here. It's an isosceles right angle triangle. Using Pythagoras, we can tell that it's a root two at this particular point. And to use this for 45, using our definition, sine is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse and cos is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So they are both one over root two. They are both one over root two, but if you put it on the calculator, it's rationalized as root two over two. I will always remember it as one over root two because of that triangle that I have there. And then tan 45 using that triangle is the opposite divided by the adjacent, which is one divided by one, which is just one. Now, to be able to do the 30 and 60s, I'm gonna hopefully do this in a, a way that is quite memorable. So we have an equilateral triangle. That means this is 60 degrees. And when I put this extra line in here to split this angle, this is 30 degrees. So if the side length is two, the side length of this bottom part is one. If we do Pythagor Pythagoras to find the height, it ends up as being root three. So if I'm going to start off by doing the 30 degrees ones that we have, I'm looking at this triangle with this as my angle. Sine is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, so it's a half. And then cos 30 is going to be the adjacent divided by the, by the hypotenuse, which is root 3 over 2. And then for tan 30, the opposite divided by the adjacent is 1 over root 3. Now, you can do these ones using the triangle for 60, looking at this part and saying, okay, 60 for sine is root 3 over 2. But actually, once I know that this one is a half, I know that this one can't be a half. It has to kind of flip around and be the root 3 over 2. And because cos 30 is root 3 over 2, then cos 60 has got to be a half. So I know that it's always a selection of a half and root 3 over 2 for these. Pretty much the only one I actually remember is that sine 30 is a half. So as soon as I switch it from a sine to a cos, I know it goes from a half to root 3 over 2. And if I switch it from 30 degrees to 60 degrees, it becomes root 3 over 2. And if I switch it to a cos and a 60, I also get the same thing as a half. And then last of all, tan 60 is the opposite divided by the adjacent, which is root 3. The way I remember these two is that 60 degrees is bigger than 30 degrees, and 1 over root 3, sorry, root 3 is bigger than 1 over root 3, so it kind of follows in that pattern. If you do this one on the calculator, though, you do get root 3 over 3. So yeah, this is probably the one that I would want everybody to remember, that sine 30 is equal to a half. That at least will allow you to memorize these ones. These are probably the most important that I would want you to memorize off by heart. And then a quick exam tip, do be aware that you may be asked to sketch transformations of the trigonometric graphs. I haven't done this in here because it's really just a repeat of the chapter four stuff about graph transformations, apart from we've got some new graphs that we can do it to. So I've got a mixed problem and it says here, given that angle ABC is a right angle and that theta is obtuse, find the value of theta and then for part B, we're going to find the area of quadrilateral ABCD and hopefully we're going to use most of the stuff that we've got here apart from the graphs part because we've got obviously nothing to do with graphs for this. So I can see two triangles. I have the ABD triangle and I have the BCD triangle and they've told us that ABC is a right angle. So I think if I can work out this angle, it would help me work out this angle and then it looks like I might be able to do something to do with the sine rule for this triangle. So to begin with, I'm going to call this angle at the top alpha and I'm going to think about doing, what rule should I do for that? I think I'll probably end up doing the cosine rule. Now, if I was to very quickly sketch that triangle out, so I have my A, B, and D. I have the alpha, I have the two root seven, I have the four and the six. Yeah, this looks like a great setup for doing a cosine rule here because I've got the three sides and a missing angle. Now, I'm not going to do the rearranged form. I always just do it as A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2bc cos alpha or cos a capital A where this is my capital A and this is A here. So I have my 2 root 7 squared equals, these don't matter which one is B and which one is C, you could do 4 squared plus 6 squared or 6 squared plus 4 squared, minus 2 times 4 times 6 times the cos of alpha and I'm going to have to do that rearranging. I'm going to be very lazy and I'm going to do my 2 root 7 squared on my calculator. So that is a 28. 
And then I'll do my 4 squared plus 6 squared on my calculator. That is 52. And 2 times 4 times 6 is minus 48 cos alpha. So I'll put the 48 cos alpha on this side. I'll do 58 minus, 52 minus 28, which is 24. And I'll do 24 divided by 48, which is a half. So I'm not even going to need the calculator for this. I know that immediately the inverse cos of a half is 60 degrees. You can see that from here. The inverse cos of a half is 60 degrees. So now that I know that this angle is 60 degrees, I can add that onto my diagram. So if this is 60 degrees. So this angle must be 30 degrees. So I can jot that down in blue. I can say that angle, what is that, uh, CBD, angle CBD, it says it was a right angle, so it's 90 degrees, minus 60 degrees, so it is 30 degrees for that part. And now I can draw the next triangle and work out what I can do with that. So I'm going to do my BCD triangle. So here is BCD that's 30 degrees, that is theta, and we know that this is 6 and this is 3 root 2. So this looks like a good setup of using the sine rule because I've got an angle and an opposite side and an angle and an opposite side. So I shall do sine of theta divided by its opposite side is equal to the sine of 30 divided by its opposite side. Now, sine of 30 is a half, but I'm probably just going to do this on my calculator anyway. So I will do the sine of 30 divided by 3 root 2, multiply it by 6, and we get that sine theta is equal to root 2 over 2, which I've seen somewhere else. I know that root 2 over 2 is the same as 1 over root 2, so I'm not even going to need the calculator to do the inverse sine. Hopefully you're telling me that this is 45 degrees. However, this is not the value of theta because it says that theta is obtuse. So we are going to use the ambiguous case here, which means that this is not going to be 45. In fact, it's going to be 180 minus 45. So I'm going to say as theta is obtuse, it is 180 minus 45, which is equal to 135 degrees. So we've done that part A for this bit. Now for part B, all I need to do is to work out the area of these triangles. So it's actually going to be two triangles, sorry, yeah, two triangles because I'm trying to find the area of this quadrilateral. Well, I can do the area of this triangle using a half AB sine C. So that's a half times four times six times the sine of alpha, which is 60. And then I will do a half times for this triangle here. I don't know this length, but I do know this length and this length. So I think I need to figure out what this angle is at the bottom. So let's just very quickly jot that in here. That means that angle C, D, B, I'll have to do 180 minus 30 minus 135. 180 minus 30 minus 135, it is 15 degrees. So it'll be a half, let's put this on the diagram, a half of 6 times 3 root 2 times the sine of 15. A half of 6 times 3 root 2. Will I fit it in? Times the sine of 15 degrees. And we'll just get that all on the calculator. Let's give myself a bit more space. So that is a half times 4 times 6. Sine 60 we know is root 3 over 2, but it's all going on the calculator. And we're going to do a half times 6 times 3 root 2 times the sine of 15 and we get, we do get an exact answer for this. My calculator gives it to me as 21 root 3 minus 9 over 2. If you don't get an exact answer, we could just write this as 13.7. I don't know what the units are because it doesn't say centimetres. So I'll say 13.7 units squared. And I did that to three significant figures for this one, 13.7. So that kind of pulled in everything. We did a bit of cosine rule. We did a bit of sine rule. We used some exact values. We did the ambiguous, um, the ambiguous sine rule. And we also did the area of a triangle. So it kind of pulls together all of those things from chapter nine. Now, I will see you in the next video, which is to do with trigonometric identities and equations.